Today we begin looking at how to solve a quadratic equation by first uh, looking at what a quadratic function is and getting some of the landmarks and the vocabulary out of the way. And then we'll solve quadratic equations by graphing them. So a quadratic equation is one that can be written in the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And if you don't like the f of x, you can treat it as if it really says y equals, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We don't let a be 0 for the simple reason that if a were 0, then the ax squared term would go away and we'd be left with just bx plus c, and that slope-intercept form of a line, and we, we can handle that. We, we've already done that. The ax squared term is called the quadratic term. bx is the linear term, and c is the constant term. So here's an example for us to get started with. Let's say that an arrow has been shot into the air from ground level so that its height with respect to time can be written as h of t, or again, if you prefer, you can call it y, h of t is equal to 64t minus 16t squared. And there's a number of questions we can ask out of this, and over the next few minutes we'll answer every single one of them. When does the arrow reach its highest point? If we shoot it into the air, there's some point at which it stops going up and starts to fall back down towards the ground. When does that happen? How high is it at that point? And finally, if we're shooting it at time t equals zero, when does the arrow return to the ground? Well, if all else fails, we can plot some points and see what happens. Yes, shall we graph? We shall. Let's take values of t that are every half second. So at zero seconds, half a second, one second, one and a half, two, two and a half seconds. And actually, we're going to need to expand this table out by a few more rows. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. So we have these time values, time since the arrow has been shot in half seconds. And for each of them, we're going to uh, we're going to replace t with that number. So for 0, we're trying to figure out what 64 times 0 minus 16 times 0 squared is. And if you say that that 0, you're correct, at time equal at uh, 0, the arrow has a height of 0. I'll change colors for 1. Uh, we'll do 1. We'll do it at 1 second. So at one second, we have 64 times 1 minus 16 times 1 squared. 64 times 1 is 64. 16 times 1 squared is 16 times 1, and that's um, 16. 64 minus 16 makes 48. And we'll fill in the rest of the table accordingly. At time zero, as we said, the height was zero. After half a second, the arrow was 28 feet up in the air. At one second, it's at 48 feet. One and a half seconds, it's at 60 feet. At two seconds, the arrow has a height of 64 feet. And at two and a half seconds, we're at 60 feet. Now, let's think about this logically. Once the arrow starts to fall back down to the ground, it's not going to lift back up. So it's probably safe to say that 64 is the max height, or at least it, we've narrowed, we've honed in on it pretty good. But we'll prove that for sure in a matter of a couple of minutes. And let's fill in the table with remaining values to see when it is that the arrow actually comes back down to a height of zero. At three seconds, we're 48 feet in the air. Three and a half seconds, 28 feet. And at four seconds, we have a height of zero. So we can answer one of the questions right now. The arrow returns to ground level after four seconds. So we've got all these points and we plot them. And you'll notice that they do not even come close to forming a line. 
we have we have a zero zero down here and then point five comma twenty eight and then one second led to forty eight and so on you can see a path developing of the arrow getting higher and higher for a while and then reaching its maximum point here and then it's coming back down to ground level and in fact we can connect those points into a nice pretty curve that represents the function this is the graph of f of x equals 64 t minus 16 t squared so we don't have to limit ourselves to time periods that are in half seconds we could use the graph to figure out what the height of the arrow is at uh, 3.92 seconds. We could plug, we could plug in uh, 3.92 for t and find an exact height. This graph has a name. It's called a parabola. And parabolas can really open in any direction, up, down, left, right, diagonally. But what we focus on in this course is strictly it opens up like a cup or it opens down like a frown. Hopefully that's not what you're thinking of quadratics at this point that you are frowning. Yeah, they can open left or right. That's not something that we look at here in, in chapter 6. A quadratic function has an axis of symmetry. This is a mirroring line. It might be hard for you to see on the screen, so I will flesh it out even brighter for you here. This line right here that I just drew in green, everything to the left side is the mirror image of what's on the right. And the axis of symmetry, as you'll notice, is vertical. That's a function of the fact, a product of the fact, rather, that uh, we are limiting ourselves to parabolas that open up or open down. So in all of the problems that we do, the axis of symmetry will be vertical. Now please note that the axis of symmetry is not part of the parabola. It is not part of the function. It is there as an indicator. So it really wasn't right for me to be drawing that as a solid line. So I'm going to erase that and do that again in a more appropriate and easier to see color than that green. It really should be a dashed line. When you are drawing the axis of symmetry, draw it as a dashed line and not as a solid line because the dashed line will then tell us this isn't actually part of the curve. It's, it's here to help guide us and help us to see what's happening. Where the axis of symmetry uh, would intersect with the parabola, uh, that point has a special name. This is called the vertex. For a parabola that opens uh, up, this would be the minimum point. In our case, for the parabola that opens down, this is the maximum. At no point will the curve ever rise to have a higher y value than it does at the vertex. So the vertex is always the extreme point. It's either the maximum point or it's the minimum point. And good news, we have a very easy way of finding where the vertex is located. It's very easily found. It's x equal, we can find the x coordinate rather, as negative b over 2a. Straight out of the a, the b, and the c that we talked about at the beginning of the video. So we can verify that the uh, that the vertex is the point 2 comma 64. That's not hard to do. Our function was 64 t minus 16 t squared. So x will be negative b. Remember that b is always, always, always the coefficient on the linear term. So even though it came before a, b is 64. But since we want the negative, we'll change that to negative 64. 
the denominator is 2 times a, that's 2 times negative 16. a is the coefficient on the quadratic term. And as you work through this, you'll get negative 64 over negative 32, and that's 2. And earlier in our table, we showed that when x was 2, or in this case, the t, t was 2, um, plugging that back in, we found that uh, the height of the uh, of the height of the parabola at that point, uh, the y coordinate was 64. So we have verified that 264 is the vertex. Now the cool thing about the symmetry is that if we move any particular distance in either direction, we'll start with one unit, then the y coordinates will be the same. You can check that with the table that we generated where when we were at uh, three and a half seconds or at four and a half seconds, we had the same height, 60 feet. And the same thing applied when we were exactly one second off in each direction. We had heights of 48. So any distance that we go to the left of the vertex, if we went the same distance to the right of the vertex, we would get the exact same y coordinate because of the symmetry. Now you remember from when we were graphing lines that a line could cross the x-axis one time, and typically crossed one time. And maybe it, was a, maybe it was a horizontal line and it didn't cross at all. Maybe it was that weird case of the horizontal line, y equals zero, and it was coincident with the, uh, the x-axis. With a quadratic, we could have one intersection. We might find that it never intersects with the x-axis, but most of the time there will be two unique places where it intersects with the x-axis. In our example, those intersection points were at 0, 0, and at 4, 0. We call these the zeros of the quadratic function. And we do that because they are solutions to uh, the altered version of our quadratic function. We'll call this a quadratic equation, by the way. We replace the f of x with 0. So if we had replaced f of x with 0 in the initial problem, what we are saying is that the solutions to 0 equals 16t, was it... 64t, excuse me, let's fix that, 64t minus 16t squared, that the solutions to those are t equals 0 and t equals 4. So here we're asked to graph f of x equals x squared plus 4x minus 12. And on, on route to doing that, we are going to find the vertex, find the axis of symmetry, and when we graph, we'll identify where the zeros are. So we'll start with the vertex to get us going here. And remember that the vertex is uh, found by x equals negative b over 2a, so we have negative 4 over 2 times 1, b is 4, and x is, the, or excuse me, a is the assumed 1 in front of x squared. Negative 4 over 2 times 1 is negative 4 over 2, that's negative 2. To find the y coordinate of the vertex, we plug it back in. So we'll go negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 12, that'll give us 4, minus 8, minus 12, and if I've done my math right, that's negative 16. So our vertex is at negative 2, negative 16. To get additional points to plot, we would start building off of the information that we have here. So I'm going to clean out a whole bunch of this space so that we can make a table of values 
and somebody's going to complain that I have left little red marks in places, and I don't really care at this point. There we go. I will change colors, though. So we'll create an X and a Y table, and we know that in the middle will be the point negative 2, negative 16. If we increase by 1, you know what, let's change colors again for this so that we don't get confused. If we change to negative 1, or if we go in the opposite direction, if we went down by 1, if we went up by 1, we'd get to negative 1. In both cases, when we plug those in, we'll get negative 15. Yikes, we're, we're not really all that close to the, um, we're not really all that close to, to the zeros. But if we kept building this along a bit here, what we would find is for negative 4, uh, we would be plugging in and getting negative 12, and at 0, we would have a negative 12, and we're well on our way. And what will eventually happen as we keep building out is we'll find that in another few steps we have found the zeros. You just have to keep building the table out um, in each direction in order to find the zeros uh, if we're doing this by way. And if we kept building that table out, what we would have found is on the right hand side that the intersection point happens when x is 2. That'll give us the point 2, 0. And on the other side, the intersection point happens at negative 6, 0. That's why we are saying that the zeros are negative 6 and positive 2. Okay, this one's your turn. Uh, you are asked to identify the vertex. Oh, I forgot to answer the axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry on the last problem was x equals negative 2. It's x equals the x-coordinate of the vertex. So, in this case, I want you to graph x squared minus 2x minus 15. And in the process, find the vertex. Use that to create the axis of symmetry. It'll be x equals the x-coordinate of the vertex. And then build an xy table to find the zeros. So first off, the vertex in this case is the point 1, negative 16. The x-coordinate was coming from x equals negative of negative 2, negative b, over 2 times 1, 2a. And that gave us 2 over 2, which is 1. And then to find the y-coordinate, you would plug it in and you would get um, 1 squared minus 2 times 1, minus 15, and that ended up being negative 16. The axis of symmetry is derived directly from this. The fact that the x-coordinate of the vertex is 1 means that the axis of symmetry is x equals 1. The axis of symmetry is the equation of a line that goes through the vertex. So it's got so it's always has always has to have the same x coordinate, the x coordinate being whatever the x coordinate of the vertex is. And as far as building out the table, so we'll draw an x and y, and x, the, the x coordinate of the vertex is 1, so we'll start there. We'll go with 1. We would need to build out to 2, to 3, to 4, to 5 ultimately, to get the y-coordinate to 0. Along the way, you would have found negative 15, negative 12. The next one would have been um, uh, negative 9 and 0. And going in the opposite direction, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, you would have found the same numbers, negative 15, negative 12, negative 9, and voila, at negative 3, we got 0. So there's a solution, negative 3 and the other, or I should say a zero, um, at negative three, and the other one happens at positive five. So the reason that we go through all of this is because we can use the graphing 
method to solve a quadratic equation. Here is x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. We need to graph it by locating, uh, we need to, uh, to graph it and use the graph to locate the x-intercepts. It might be of some value to us and would be of some value to us to find the vertex. And remember that the x-coordinate is negative b over 2a. So we would have negative 5 over 2 times 1. Oh darn, we're going to have a... Uh, we're going to have a decimal answer here, and hopefully that's not going to cause us a whole bunch of grief down the line. This will be negative 2.5. So once we have that the x-coordinate is negative 2.5, we'll find y by plugging it in. We have negative 2.5 squared plus 5 times negative 2.5 plus 6, this will be 6.25 minus 7.5, excuse me, negative 12.5 plus 6, and that ends up being a very, very close, but not quite zero, of negative 0.25. So we know we're close, and when we create the table, what will, hap what will happen very quickly, instead of jumping by one, we'll just jump by one half. So you can see the solution here, negative three and negative two. So starting on the fact that we have the vertex here, and we're pretty close, that it was negative 2.5, for x and negative 0.25 for y indicates we're probably really, really close. So let's knock it down to, let's go up to negative 2, we'll increase by 1 half. If we went down to negative 3 by decreasing by 1 half, in both cases, when we plug in uh, back into the equation up at the top, we would get 0. So we have negative 3 and negative 2, that those are our zeros. That means that these are the solutions to the equation x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. I think we're going to skip this problem, but you can pause and look at it yourself for some study because we're headed on to one that you're going to try yourself. Here we have x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. Find the vertex, use that as a constructing point in order to, um, in order to solve the equation. We'll come back together in a moment. So the thing to do here is start with the vertex. x equals negative b over 2a, and that'll be negative of negative 6 over 2 times 1. Negative of negative 6 is 6 over 2. That'll give us a, an x-coordinate of 3. And when we plug that back in, fix that to make that look more like an equal sign, we'll have 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 8 or 9 minus 18 plus 8. 9 minus 18 is negative 9 plus 8 makes negative 1 and negative 1 it's not 0 but man is it close. So we know that we're in the neighborhood. The further that we are from 0 with the y coordinate of the vertex the, the more the, the further out our table is going to go in each direction. So this will end up being solved pretty darn quick from 3, negative 1. We'll take a jump of one step in each direction. We'll go up to 4. 4 squared is 16 minus 6 times 4. 
So we have 16 minus 24, which is negative 8 plus 8 makes 0. Hey, we found one of the solutions. If we went up by 1 to get 4, let's go down by 1 to use 2. And so we'll plug that in. 2 squared is 4 minus 6 times 2. So we have 4 minus 12, which is negative 8 plus 8 makes 0. And we have found our solution. And if you wanted to extend this table out a little further to see what, what is going on after that, you could have stretched this out to uh, x equals 1 and x equals 5. So there's an important relationship to be mentioned here before we finish up the video. As I said earlier, there can be 0, 1, or 2 of these zeros. 0, 1 are two places where the parabola crosses the x-axis. And it also turns out that there can be uh, 0, 1, or 2 unique real solutions to the quadratic equation when it's set equal to 0. This is not a coincidence. And here visually is what's happening. When you have two places for the parabola to intersect the x-axis, you are creating two places for which the function equals zero. It's happening here, and it's happening here. And then for the one real solution, well, if it's only crossing, if it's only coming down and just touching the x-axis and then turning around and going away, it's only connecting with the x-axis at one place. And so we would say that there is one real solution. And in the third case, we have a parabola that approaches the x-axis, but does not cross, it does not even touch it. So if the parabola doesn't make contact with the x-axis in any way, shape, or form, there can't be a solution here. And so we would say that there is no real solution. Are there solutions? Yeah, they're complex. A point that we'll come back to a little later in this chapter. But that's all for now. So thanks for watching, and we'll be back next time.